Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button, it helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are just after market close on Thursday, September 9th. I wanted to quickly share my three swing trade buys for the day and why I took the position uh, very, very quickly today because it's just a few tickers, so it should be pretty easy. PFX. Now, PFX is a very low volume stock. Today's volume was just over 4,000. <laughs> Yesterday's was just over 1,000. The day before, 3,000. You, you get the gist. But it's been in this up channel since it was, I mean, if we say it was clearly in here, uh, it was around $11 at that point, and that was on April 22nd, 2020. All right, and so since then, it's, uh, as you can see, it was $7 at one point in this channel. And now it's, you know, topped out at 44 at the moment, and it's clearly toward the bottom of the channel here. This is my reasoning. Toward the bottom of the channel, fresh bullish crossover, um, and that's it. My question here is, am I going to be able to get out of the position because the volume is so low? I think so. It's not like I have a huge fraction of, you know, a few thousand shares are getting traded per day. But you do. there are some days like this day, 578 shares got traded on the 1st of September. So there are some extremely low volume days. Um, but I'm willing to give this, you know, a few weeks to see if it does make a run up toward the top of the channel. Because if it does, that'll probably put it in or close to the 50s um, and if not then then it's fine obviously, obviously if it loses support of this channel then I would peel off at that point it also has support fresh support over the 20 MA uh, and has had support of the 50 for several days at this point so fresh support over the 20 is sort of an additional um, sort of nod of the head <laughs> as far as I was concerned um, NAII is also a very, very low volume stock. Today it had a big uptick um, on 116,000 volume. Yesterday it was 14,000, 36,000 the day before. So uh, the thing I'm looking for here is that clearly is holding this most recent uptrend, which is pretty parallel to the 200 MA at this point, uh, which is fine. But it's also starting to wrestle with the 20 and the 50 MA. The thing I don't love is this bearish crossover, the 20 over the 50. But it obviously had this big red day down almost 8%. So it made that back and more today, up over 9.5%. So I'm hoping that this is signaling a bit of a reversal here. And the degree to which this wedge or this wedge um, come into play, you know, along with this uptrend line. It's peaked itself out of both of those for the time being. And so if it can establish out, it might open itself up to a bit of run room to the upside. Um, but we'll have to see. Overall, if you compare it to, you know, back here, we're pulling several days, it's sustaining a higher than normal volume and has generally pumped up. I know it's had a few pullbacks, but it's generally pumped up with this increased volume. So willing to give it some time and see if anything. Um, you know, works itself through on this one. NYMX, uh, not so dissimilar. 135,000 volumes today, 175,000 yesterday, 102 the day before. So um, the thing on this one, now I know it does have this bearish crossover on the MACD and that's not a great sign, but it, it does have support of the 20 MA. But mostly what I'm looking for at the moment is on Monday, I believe it is, uh, or maybe it's Tuesday. Uh, sometime early next week. <laughs> I'll have to double check the dates. It might actually be next Wednesday. Now I think of it, it might be the 15th, but um, I checked it before I took the position. So I did confirm that I had time to get in and get out. But this might be a quicker hitter of a play, meaning I might jump out of it tomorrow or on Monday or on Tuesday, depending on when that catalyst date is. But I think that they have an NDA filing with the FDA for some type of approval or some, something that they want to, some sort of process that they want to go through. Um, they are, uh, as a company, they are a pharmaceutical company, so that would make sense. And um, and those things can obviously be big catalysts. The NDA might not be much of anything other than just bringing some eyeballs and some interest into it. Uh, but you know, I thought it was worth throwing a few shekels at and seeing if anything stuck or not. 
Um, all right, but that was all for today. I didn't see many setups, to be honest. I didn't see m many good setups from the places that I was looking, and I was a little compressed for time, so I didn't have time to dig and dig and dig and dig. So nothing was jumping out to me. Grabbed these three and sort of marched forward. So we'll see how these go. And as you know, at the end of the month or the beginning of next month, I'll do an update on my profit and loss from the trades that we're talking about in September to see how they did uh, as a percentage gain or loss throughout the month. We'll go ticker by ticker in a spreadsheet. I, I won't do them all ticker by ticker in a spreadsheet, but I'll show you the spreadsheet. And uh, and then we'll go through the totals and talk about some of the bigger winners and bigger losers and sort of what happened there. All right, well, I hope that your trading week is going well and that you're able to finish it strong tomorrow. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.